Online teaching? No problem. Technology, people, technology. Now, um, where, where's the zoom button? Hi, my name's Gemma Perry and welcome to Mooncake, where ESL teaching is made easy. If you're new here, then you need to know that I make weekly ESL teaching tip videos to help you improve your English teaching. So if you are teaching ESL abroad, make sure you subscribe below and hit that notification bell for weekly ESL teaching tips. Also real quick, if you are new here, say hi in the comments below and let me know where in the world you're teaching. The other day on social media, I asked you what your biggest questions are regarding online teaching. And one of the most asked questions was what platform do I recommend using? Well, a long story short, I recommend using Zoom. And this is because it's very easy to use and it can effectively be used for free. So today we're gonna look at some of the Zoom features and how to get set up. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go to zoom.us. Now the great thing about Zoom is that for the majority of you, you're gonna be teaching less than 100 students at one time. And if you're having lessons that are for 40 minutes or less, then the free basic plan is all you're going to need. So effectively, you're gonna be able to teach on Zoom for free. If you are teaching lessons for over 40 minutes or holding lessons where more than 100 students are gonna be logged on at the same time, then you will need to upgrade. So once you get onto zoom.us, all you need to do is click on sign up, it's free. To sign up, all you're gonna need is an email address or you can sign up by clicking on the sign up with Google or Facebook buttons. So go ahead and get yourself signed up. Once you are signed up, you'll be prompted to fill out your personal details. So fill those in and then if you click on the meeting tab over here on the left hand side, this is where you'll be able to see your upcoming meetings. Now, you will notice that down here at the bottom, there are some additions for Chrome and Microsoft. You don't need to add these extensions, but they are there if you wanted to add them. So let's say you were wanting to start a class right away. All you need to do is go to the top right hand side here and click on host a meeting. Now you will see here that it gives you a few options to either have your video on or off or to just share your screen. Now as we're looking to hold a class online, we're gonna start with our video on and you'll be prompted to download and run Zoom. So make sure you give permission for Zoom to do that. Once it opens, it'll ask you to either use your computer audio or to test the speaker and microphone. So if you are using a headset or a professional mic, you can test these here to see if you are set up okay. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and click on use computer audio. And you can see that once I click on that, I am then in my visual classroom. Now you will note that as I move my cursor along the bottom here, I have a few different options, which we're gonna go through in just a minute. But for now, we're gonna click on that invite button. And as you can see, as soon as I click there, I'm able to invite someone from my contacts. Or if you click in the bottom left here, where it says copy URL, you can send a link to the classroom to your students. On the right hand side, you'll note a password and you'll need to send that password to your students with the link so that they can log on. So once you've invited your students to join the class, they will likely enter the classroom intermittently. And dear God, they are noisy. I am trying to teach, would we please stop them from interrupting? Well, actually we can. If we go back to these options at the bottom of our screen and click on manage participants, our list of students will appear and we can mute their mics. Just hover over their name and you'll find that mute button. Now, if we click on the more button next to their name, we can rename a student or even add a profile picture so we know who's who. At the bottom here, we also have the power to mute everyone. And if we go into the more options at the bottom, we can also mute students upon entry. So if they are late, they don't disrupt class as they enter. But for now, we're gonna exit here by hitting that corner arrow and pressing close. And next, let's take a look at some of our other options and controls. Down at the bottom here, you're able to mute your own mic. So if you do need to shout at a family member to be quiet while teaching, you can do so without your students hearing you. Just remember that they can still see you unless you click on the stop video button, which you can find right next to the mute mic button. Now another great feature about Zoom is that we can use a virtual background and this works especially well if you have a green screen. But you don't need a green screen in Zoom, you can still use a virtual background by clicking on choose virtual background. From there you're able to choose from a selection of different backgrounds and once you click on one you'll be asked to download the first time you use them. I personally like the one with the northern lights. Without the green screen it's still pretty good. 
Not perfect, but good and can make your lesson all the more fun with a bit of imagination. If you are using your own green screen, then you can switch to I have a green screen at the bottom here, which will give you better results. But you can also choose your own by clicking on this little plus button and finding the file you want to use. For now though, we're going to click on none, exit out of there and head back to our options at the bottom of the screen here. So we have looked at muting ourselves, turning off our camera and using virtual backgrounds. So let's go ahead and take a look at screen sharing by clicking on the screen sharing button. Now once you press that screen sharing button, it's going to give you a choice of all the screens you currently have open. And you can choose one screen that you would like to share with students. So if you have a PPT presentation that you would like to share, you can click on that and automatically the screen is filled with that presentation. But as you can see, you are still visible in the top right hand corner. You can then use that presentation to teach your language points. Once you're done, you can click on the stop share button at the top of the screen here. And as you can see, it takes you straight back out to the main classroom area. Let's go back and click on that screen share button one more time. And this time we're going to select the whiteboard. Now the whiteboard is a fantastic tool where you can draw. For example, you can draw a picture such as the face that I'm drawing right here. That's just missing a mouth. If you do make a mistake or your picture is not turning out quite how you hoped, then you can clear it by hitting the clear button at the top right hand side. Other options at the top here include a torch which highlights your mouse movement so students can see clearly what you're pointing at. Other options include shapes such as stars and text where we can type out different words. If we need to, we can use the Erase button to erase things individually. When you finish, just hit that Stop Share button once again. Let's take a look at the last few buttons on the right hand side. This button gives you the option to chat with students. You can chat with everyone at the same time or with a single student. And you're also able to send files to students through this chat platform. So if you do have some teaching materials that you need to pass on to the class, you can do that through this chat. Next to the chat, you have a record button. So if you wanted to record your class for demo purposes or to share with other students that might have missed your class, you can do so by hitting the record button at the beginning of your class. Lastly, there is the reactions button where you can give the class a thumbs up or a clap as a well done. Now your students will need to be set up on Zoom prior to your class. So it's a good idea to send them all the information in advance so they can be ready on time for your lesson. Zoom is available in a variety of different languages. And if you scroll right to the bottom, you have an option to change the language there. That said, for countries such as China, they'll need to use the zoom.com.cn page as they won't be able to access the zoom.us page. So there you have it, Zoom and how we can get set up for our online ESL lessons. Now, as I mentioned, I have been working on some PPTs and other materials for online teaching. So if you want access to some free teacher resources, make sure you check out the Mooncake English webpage linked below. That's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Or if you're interested in a teacher tea by Mooncake, then you can find them linked below. And of course, remember to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more weekly ESL teaching tips from Mooncake.